Well, good morning and thank everyone for joining us today. Yesterday we've gathered with friends, family, and the community of Tiffany Fletcher to honor her memory and celebrate her life. Tiffany was a dedicated and passionate Parks and Recreation employee, and her death is an immense loss to our city. We share our deepest condolences with her friends, her family, and her colleagues. It was maybe one of the hardest funerals I've ever attended. As most of you know, Tiffany was struck by crossfire in the middle of the day while serving her community at Mill Creek Rec, Rec Center. This tragedy reflects a frightening rise in gun violence near recreation centers and the ongoing crisis citywide. As you may already know, as of last night, 400 people have lost their lives to gun violence in Philadelphia this year. We are all heartbroken and outraged by every life lost. They were, our, they, were, they were friends, neighbors, coworkers, and classmates. They were our family members, all lost to senseless, preventable violence. We will use every tool at our disposal to fight this crisis. And today I will sign, a law, uh, sign an executive order uh, to, ban, to ban deadly weapons at city recreation facilities. We will not tolerate the endangerment of children and families while they are in the care of our treasured community spaces. And we must do everything we can to protect the public as well as the dedicated staff that make these facilities run. Pools, playgrounds, and rec centers are no place for a gun. Actually, there's no place for a gun anywhere but especially at pools, playgrounds, or rec centers. It's unconscionable that anyone would bring deadly weapons to places where our children, our city's children gather. In order to give our city's children the education, <clears throat> opportunities, and quality of life they deserve, we have, ha we, we have to have peaceful and secure places for learning and play. We cannot turn the tide of violence without safe public spaces. Banning guns and other deadly weapons from indoor and outdoor recreational spaces throughout our city is a critical step to protecting our public spaces and preventing the senseless violence that claimed Tiffany Fletcher's life. As a reminder, this ban comes just weeks after we announced the $10,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of someone who fires a weapon within 500 feet of a school, a rec center, or a library. We hope those with information about any crime will come forward so we can get the perpetrators off the street. We encourage any resident with information about crimes to report it anonymously to 215-686-TIPS. That's 215-686-TIPS. I want to thank Commissioner Ott Lovell and the Department of Parks and Recreation, the Office of Children and Families, our Law Department, the District Attorney, and the Philadelphia Police Department for their partnership in establishing and enforcing new this new weapons ban. <clears throat> and I want to assure all of our residents and city workers that their safety and security is our top priority. This is an important step forward, and we will continue to do everything in our power to address this issue. And I will now hand it over to Parks and Rec, Rec Commissioner Catherine Ott Lovell. Um, before she comes up, though, I, there's no reason to bring a gun anywhere, especially at a rec center, at a pool, at a basketball game. It's insane. And because this state is the way, the state that it is, people can get a permit to carry for no reason and carry anything they want. They can carry a bazooka if they want. It's insane. So we want to at least try to do our best to keep these weapons out of rec centers and pools and places where kids gather. Um, and we, and Ka Catherine has stories about rec center employees that have seen people, you know, carry a gun into a rec center, carry a gun into a basketball game, complain that the re referee's not doing the right thing and he's going out to his car to get his gun. It's all literally insane. And we live in an insane state because of it. So, Catherine. Thank you, Mayor Kenny. Thank you to our Managing Director, Tumar Alexander, the Office of Children and Families, the Philadelphia Police Department, our Office of Violence Prevention, District Attorney Larry Krasner, all of you for partnering with us at Parks and Recreation to reclaim our cherished community spaces. As the Commissioner of Parks and Recreation, my job is to bring fun and joy to the children and families of our city. Our 159 recreation centers and 300 plus parks are safe and sacred spaces where young people come to feel safe, supported, and secure. Our facilities are staffed by public servants who care deeply for their own communities and who mentor all young people who come through their gate as if they were their own. But too often recently, our recreation centers and playgrounds have become the scene of gun battles, violence, and senseless loss of life. Since 2019, there have been nearly 300 incidents of gun violence at a parks and recreation facility. We have, we have got to answer the question, how can we support and uplift the children of our city 
when our own recreation facilities are so often under fire. Today, we are taking one more step forward toward answering that question and pushing back against the wave of gun violence that most recently claimed the life of Tiffany Fletcher, a dedicated Parks and Rec employee working at Mill Creek Playground. Tiffany came to work on September 9th, ready to make her community stronger, and yet lost her life just hours later when members of the public bought guns into Mill Creek, making that playground a target. We cannot say often enough or loudly enough, young people are always welcome in our recreation centers, our parks, our playgrounds. Guns are not. Our playgrounds, our courts, our fields, and pools are open to all. To keep them safe, we must be free of guns and deadly weapons. Our staff, with the support of the Philadelphia Police Department, elected officials, and community leaders work hard to keep our sites safe and welcoming. We owe it to the children and families we serve, to our colleagues who dedicate their lives to service, to do everything in our power as a city to keep deadly weapons out of our recreational spaces. I want to send a special thank you to the staff of Mill Creek Recreation Center, to Tiffany Fletcher's family, and to all of the parks and recreation professionals who dedicate their lives to serving our city. And I want to thank our Mayor Jim Kenney, again, the Office of Children and Families, our Law Department, the Police Department, the District Attorney's Office, for their partnership in establishing and enforcing this new firearms ban. Please join me in welcoming District Attorney Larry Krasner. I'd like to thank the mayor for what I think is a very, very positive step forward. I'd like to thank the Parks Commissioner for being adamant about the safety of all of our Philadelphia residents and the ability of young people to do constructive things in public spaces that we all pay for and belong to all of us. I'd like to thank Council Member Cindy Bass and also Council Member Gautier for all of their hard work on gun violence and in the case of Council Member Bass especially, her hard work to keep these public spaces safe because they're not always safe, as the mayor said. Fahim Key was arrested a couple of days ago for a truly heinous crime that he committed on rec center property about six weeks ago. I want to give a lot of credit to assigned detective Amir and also detectives Line Miller and Claire who worked diligently on this case. For those of you who do not remember it, this is one that happens at the McVeigh Rec Center. It is a basketball game, a basketball game. Nothing is happening but people playing basketball until Fahim Key decides he doesn't like how he was blocked for a layup, and no matter how hard the victim in this case tries to de-escalate and back away and walk away, he ended up paralyzed. He was shot from the back as he walked away with his gear from a basketball game. This is what happens when we have guns everywhere. And so it is my pleasure to say that people who bring guns onto rec center property are going to have to deal with my office. Yes, they're going to face the usual charges for possession of firearms and charges for anything else bad that they do on those sites. But thanks to this executive order, their activity will also be treated as trespass because what they are doing is they are going past signage, they're going past their knowledge that they're not permitted to do it, and therefore they are not allowed to be on those premises. Exactly how that will play out in the individual case, we will see. But let me be clear, even if you have a permit to carry, even if you have a permit to carry and you go on those premises, then you got a problem with me. It is my pleasure to introduce Senior Director Erica Atwood. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend Mayor Kenny and Commissioner Lovell for um, signing this executive order and banning guns um, and other deadly weapons from city recreation centers. Uh, this is a, an essential step to addressing the rise in violence in these community centers. Since the 1800s, a consistent link has been made between youth opportunities to participate in recreation programs and the level of crime and delinquency. 
Our recreation facilities are a vital part of the city's gun violence prevention strategy, the Roadmap to Safer Communities. One of the key pillars of the roadmap is connected and thriving youth, young adults, and families. And our recreation centers, playgrounds, pools, and other public facilities sit at the nexus of all these things. The parks and recreation the parks and recreation centers across the city are a place where all are welcomed. But we have to remove the instruments of harm. Like the commissioner said, guns have no place here. These are places where grandmothers participate in line dancing and third graders make their first best friend. They connect our communities, provide a place to learn, and promote partnerships and should be filled with laughter. Young people only spend 20% of their waking hours in school. How they spend the other 80% of their waking hours makes a significant difference in their overall development. This is so important because there's strong evidence that young people who participate in organized activities are less likely to engage in criminal and delinquent acts, less likely to become violent and aggressive, less likely to succumb to substance abuse, and less likely to drop out of school. It is crucial that we protect these safe havens by taking a strong stance against violence in the place, place there and across the city. Recreation centers are places where community members can together work to rebuild the village. They are places that support our children in developing self-confidence, optimism, and initiative. This is where young people are provided opportunities to experience a sense of belonging and connectedness. A more connected community is a tr more trusting community. A more trusting community inevitably becomes a safer community. We can no longer have our playground lights dimmed by violence. Again, I would like to thank the mayor and commissioner and managing director for taking this decisive, decisive action. I believe that by taking a diverse, coordinated approach to gun violence crisis, we eventually arrive at a safer, healthier, more hopeful Philadelphia. And with that, I'd like to hand it back to the mayor and the commissioner to sign the executive order. Before we do that, I'd like to invite Council Member Bass and Council Member Gautier up to speak on behalf of City Council. Good morning, everyone. It feels like good afternoon. It's been a long morning. Um, you know, we, we've done a lot in City Council around gun violence particularly around parks and recreation centers. Um, these are supposed to be safe spaces. In 2013, uh, our office organized every district council member's office to ensure that there would be cameras at every site. Working with parks and recreation, we were able to ensure that we had cameras that would capture whatever was happening and to really deter violent crime from happening on those sites. In 2015, we passed a bill unanimously that will require parks and recreation to provide reports to members of council regarding um, gun activity and violence uh, surrounding uh, recreation centers and, and parks in our neighborhoods so that as we allocate capital dollars we know what we need and where we need to put it and have that information at the ready. And in 2019 under the leadership of Council President Darrell Clark um, we passed I believe unanimously again uh, a bill which said that guns were uh, prohibited on park and recreation spaces. So, you know, this is a welcome addition. I just want to thank the mayor uh, and the entire administration for all of their hard work in making this happen. We need all tools in the toolbox. We need as many resources as possible. And I think that this will go a long way to ensuring that our neighborhoods are going to be safe and that our children are going to be safe and that these are going to be safe spaces as they are intended to be. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Council Member Jamie Gaudier. I represent the 3rd District. I want to start by thanking Mayor Kenny for signing this executive order and thanking Commissioner Outlevel as well um, for not only signing the order but for her consistent um, and fierce dedication to Parks and Recreation and also my colleague um, Council Member Cindy Bass for all of her work in this area. Um, it's been too many times that we've been in at 
you know, recreation centers and seen just tragic and horrific um, violence. Um, in my district, um, you know, I can remember being with Commissioner Outlevel um, at Christie Rec Center um, when Kyrie Simmons was shot down while playing basketball. Kyrie was 16 years old. Um, he died in that playground by himself um, after being shot. Um, and, you know, this sort of latest uh, in incident in my district with Tiffany Fletcher was just too heartbreaking um, to even really swallow um, because um, Tiffany and, you know, the staff at Mill Creek Rec Center and even the volunteers just worked so hard to make that space safer for kids. And so I'm glad that we're taking this step um, to ban um, guns from these centers because these places should be safe. They should be safe for kids and they should be safe um, for staff and, and for anyone who, you know, walks on the premises of a rec center or playground or any space that's meant for recreation. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful um, that the next step um, that we take as a city is um, finding ways to better reach these kids. It was very striking to me um, that, you know, the young man caught for Tiffany Fletcher shooting is 14 years old. Um, and, you know, there have been countless incidents where the people on both sides of a gun are getting younger and younger and younger. And so I feel that we're in this space in the city where we are losing very young people um, to the streets and to violence. Um, and I'm for any effort that's going to keep guns out of the hands of young people. Um, and I also am, am for any effort that's going to work to reach these young people and put them on a different path. And so I'm glad to stand here today with my colleagues um, to take this step. Thank you so much. Any questions? Yes. Um, this DA could talk about enforcement. Um, basically, this this is to give some peace of mind and capacity for rec center employees to call the police when they see somebody with a gun in their waistband <clears throat> or someone's threatening to go out there their car and get a gun because they didn't like the call the referee made. Um, I mean, the, the, these folks, you know, I watched them yesterday um, line up in, on Lehigh Avenue like police officers burying one of their own. And it was, we did a city, we did a city sponsored funeral for Tiffany. And as I walked out Deliverance, uh, Deliverance Church and looked out into the street, I saw what I usually see when a police officer or a firefighter dies in the line of duty. And they were all out there lined up like they're on the front lines and they are. So if this gives them some protection, some peace of mind, some ability to call the authorities when some knucklehead decides they want to bring a gun into a rec center and they see it, that's what part of what this is about. If I could do more legally, I would do a lot more legally, trust me. I would get every gun off the street and every gun shop would be closed. I mean, we had, it was reported you know, that 15,000 crime guns were sold by 10 different gun shops in Philadelphia and in Upper Darby. I mean, some, some, is that what the Second Amendment meant? I mean, is that, the, is that the crux of what our forefathers thought they were doing when they protected a single-shot, muzzle-loaded long gun to fight the British? I don't think so. I really don't think so. So that with that, with what we're doing is trying to address their daily concerns when they go to work, that they have to confront people with guns because this is, state is insane. Yes.
Law. Well, we have lawyers. Hi, good morning. Andrew Richman, uh, City of Philadelphia Law Department. This is a management and operational directive that pertains to the city's uh, city owned uh, recreational property, recreational centers and properties. So it's a slightly different, it's different than the 2018 ordinance. Again, this is a, a, a management and operational directive that pertains to city-owned recreational centers. What was that? The, the Correct, but as, as, the, as the steward, as, as the property owner of the city's recreational centers, we believe that the city is, has the authority to limit uh, guns on our, our own property. Um, again, as I repeat, I'll repeat myself again. This is uh, slightly different in that it pertain it's the city doing this as the owner of these properties. Well, we're going to see, I assume. Um, there's no reason in God's earth to bring a gun to a pool or a rec center. There's just none. And our kids are exposed to this. I mean, think, think about the loss of Tiffany Fletcher, a 14-year-old with a ghost gun. I mean, you think that our founding fathers were protecting ghost guns in the Second Amendment? I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous that a 41-year-old mother of three, beautiful, vibrant person was buried yesterday because this state allows ghost guns to exist or to be, to, to be sold in the state. That's, that's, that's the sin that they're going to have to speak to when they pass and go up to see God because it's ridiculous. I don't know what they're going to, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I, I, do I expect? Yeah, I expect. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be trying. And it doesn't mean that certain publications of the city should not take ads from gun shows up in Montgomery County, where a lot of these guns are flowing in to the city, which I think is unconscionable to have a position against guns and violence and then accept money from the gun industry to do ads in their newspaper to entice people to go buy guns at a gun show. There's something wrong with that whole it's not your fault. It's a business decision. All I'm saying is it's wrong. So get off the high horse. So I think you're very misinformed. The House did a study of gun possession cases and found that the longest sentences in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania are happening in Philadelphia. So perhaps you could explain to me your source of information. Have they read the study? Have you read the study? Are you aware that the House did a lengthy study of the entire state and they determined that the longest sentences that are served for gun possession offenses by far are in Philadelphia compared to all the other categories. Thank you. Th please do. It would be very helpful to have information. All right, thanks everyone. That's it. Thank you. Thanks for joining. I mean, all of you should get in a car and drive up the turnpike and ask the leadership in Harrisburg why this is 